Welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me today. I've got a special message for you that the Lord continues to place on my heart. So I'm here to decree and declare this word because I know it's going to set many free. So Father God, as I share your word, Father, I pray that it will be all of you and none of me, Lord. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, give your people ears to hear and a heart to receive what the living God is saying. In Jesus name I pray and thank you. Amen. In this hour, the Lord just keeps putting in my spirit to talk to you all about being vigilant, not getting distracted, trusting in the promises of God, trusting in the word of God. Everything we need is in this book of life and everything God wants to reveal to us, he can do so through his spirit. He can lead us to the right books, to the right people, and it will all align to this truth, his word. It will never go away. It will never go one tit, one jottle away from what we have in this holy book. It will only complement. It will only align with it. And we see that we are in the information age where the Bible says in the last days, people are going to be going to and fro, looking for knowledge, trying to become wiser because the information is just so readily out there at the tip of your fingertip. But you have to be wise, child of God. You have to pray about everything that God will direct your steps and order your steps in his word and whatever books you read, what you watch on television. It must uh it must align with the word of God and the Holy Spirit, which is why it's so important that we're filled. There are times that I could be listening to videos or reading a book and it does not, um, the Holy Spirit will convict me to put it away or to turn it off. You have to be so in tune with the Holy Spirit because he is the one that's going to teach you between the truth and a lie. The Holy Spirit is the one that will give you discernment. You don't need to eat off of this tree and evil thinking that somehow, you know, if you know every conspiracy, if you go down that deep, dark rabbit hole, that somehow it's going to make you wiser. It's going to give you more understanding. Child of God, I'm here to warn you. God keeps putting on my heart to tell my people to stop eating off of the tree of good and evil. We are in the season of the fig tree where there's a great examination that is happening in the house of God. And he is going to be checking to see what fruit is on our tree. And it cannot be a lot of mixing and a mingling, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We have to be sold out for Christ. We have to really focus on what is good because the Bible tells us in the scriptures, be wise, be wise to what is good, you all. Be simple to what is evil. And I'm seeing so many well-meaning people getting pulled into conspiracy land. That is the ancient tree. It's, it's a name differently, but guess what? It is the same thing. The enemy likes to come and disguise things, but it's the same old game that he's playing. And I need for you to wake up. And what the Lord called me to do is to pray over his people. Do you know that we have to be renewed in our mind? We have to be renewed in our spirit. We have to ask God creating me a clean heart and a right spirit, and he will do that. So if you've been entangled in eating off of the tree of good evil and evil, what is that? Conspiracy theories focused on what is evil in the land. You know more about what is evil than what is good because what that will do, it will change your reality. Listen, that is what Satan did in the Garden of Eden. He came to Eve and he said, do you think that you know all that you can know? Don't you know that, you know, you could be wiser? You could have more understanding about this and that. And Eve fell for the trap, not understanding that she was walking with God. She was talking with God. God was filling her in on everything that she would ever need to know. He was also protecting her. Because once she ate that fruit, once her and Adam partake of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the Bible says their eyes were open. The sin nature began to fall upon them. They could understand and they could see all the darkness that before they had no clue about. They had no idea, but their eyes were open and now there was no going back, right? And the Satan, Satan knew that, right? He tricked them. He told them a little bit of truth, right? 
but it was in, interwoven with a flood of lies. And that is the same with conspiracy. And what happened in that moment in the garden, they were living in paradise, you all. They were living in their own personal Goshen. They had everything that they could ever want or need. But the moment they took a bite of that tree, their whole, I'm sorry, the fruit of the tree, their whole perception, their whole reality changed. <clears throat> and I can tell you, from experience when i <clears throat> was in the world and i was you know taking part of the conspiracy theories and i would you know research everything i mean i could tell you about everything and let me just tell you it didn't benefit me one bit and as i thought it did i was deceived and then as i began to walk closer with the lord he said come away from all of that darkness i want you no part of it and as I came away from the darkness in obedience and I began to eat off of the tree of life and I began to believe what God said about me and I believe to, to believe the best about his world and, and, that, and that he could protect me and that he could keep me and that he was the one that would make sure that I had everything that I needed. I didn't need to fear what the government was doing. I didn't need to fear what man was doing. I didn't need to know and embrace all of that wickedness because it was changing my reality. But when I trusted in his word, when I began to eat off the tree of the life, let me tell you all my reality shifted the way I see things the way I perceive things even the sky above me everything changed so I'm here to tell you to stop partaking off of the tree of good and evil this is a warning we are in the season of the fig tree examination is happening in the house of God first do not be like Lot's wife going back into the world, going back to your own understanding, going back to your own ways. I'm sure I am not the first warning that you're getting, but simply a confirmation stop because destruction is ahead of you. Many of you are pulling other people into conspiracies, into lies, into deception, and to eat off of the tree of good and evil. You see, it wasn't good enough for Eve, right? Just to eat that apple. Mm -mm. She had to pull others in. She pulled Adam into the deception and it cost them. Listen, child of God, we will be held accountable. Do you know that as teachers of the world, we to word and prophetesses and prophets, we will be held at a higher standard? So are those who pull people into wickedness. You will be measured as well. Be very careful in what you pull people into and what you take a part of because the accountability will be had. There are consequences. And so I want to pray before I get into Jeremiah 11, because that's the word of the Lord that he has given me to share along with 2 Kings. But I don't think I'm going to have time to get into 2 Kings because it is a deep prophetic word as well and also a, a divine strategy. So I want to do a separate video for that. Um, but let us pray because this is what the Lord told me. He said, pray over my people for a renewed mind in Christ. Pray and repent for eating off of the tree of good and evil and allow the Lord to renew and refresh and cleanse your spirit. He said, pray for new spiritual sight that the Lord will cleanse your eye gaze and to cleanse your spirit. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the truth of your word that is a light upon our path and a lamp upon our feet. Father God, I thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that guides us the truth and keeps us us from being deceived. Father God, there is a lot of deception in these last days. And Father God, for those of us who have partaken off of the tree of good and evil, Lord, we come to you and we ask that you forgive us. We ask that you would cleanse our heart, cleanse our spirit. We pray that you would cleanse our spiritual eye gates. Lord, cleanse our minds, Father, so that we can be renewed in Christ, Father God. We want to think the way you think. We want to see what you see. We want to believe what you want us to believe. Lord, Lord, we want to understand that your promises are yes and amen. We want to know that you are our provision. You are our source. We need not fear what the wicked do, Father God, because their judgment, it is in your hands, Father God. But we want to walk with you. We want to talk with you. We want to be restored to that garden state, the garden of, Eve, uh, of Eden, where there was nothing but paradise and good. And where you had every provision, you had it all planned out for us, Father God. 
Father, renew in us a clean spirit. Father, we repent for eating off of the tree of good and evil. Let us be restored in the word of life. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. And I just pray that you receive this word, you all, because I know that it will bless many. Please share this word. This has to get go forth. It needs to get out because there are too many people that have taken the bait of Satan because he's disguised it as something else. Oh, it's just conspiracy. You have to be wise. You have to know all of these things, right? And it doesn't help you. But the Bible says, if you will be wise to what is good and know that God is good, that his grace is sufficient, that everything that he needs to warn you of, he is so capable of doing that. He sends his messengers. But do you know that you have the Holy Spirit that lives inside you that will convict you, that will tell you, no, this is not good or to warn you not to go here, not to, to do this. The Holy Spirit gives you discernment so that you're not deceived in any way. So just trust God. You don't need to trust the world systems. You don't need to know about the big bad wolf and all of his devices. The Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. So he's going to tell you the Holy Spirit. What are Satan's devices? He will train your hands for war. You do not have to eat off of the tree of good and evil. God is going to train you in what it is that he wants you to understand because the victory god has already won the victory know that it is finished right we just have to walk in the goodness of god and stay focused on his word and not get distracted i hope that this word that you receive because in jeremiah 11 it talks about there being a conspiracy all right a conspiracy amongst god's people why because they did not have the spirit of obedience. They broke covenant. They were so filled with their idolatries and their sin and their love for the flesh and the world that they, they, they did not cling to what was good, you all. They broke covenant. And that was the conspiracy in God's eyes. That was the conspiracy that God sent the prophet Jeremiah to warn his people of, not about what's going on in government in DC and how the peace of gates and how wicked people are. No, no, no. He was warning the people of this conspiracy. He said, you're mindful of so many things, but you're not mindful that you've broken covenant. This is why I said we are in the year of the fig tree where self-examination has to happen. 2023, what kind of fruit is on your tree? When Jesus passes by, what will he see? I'm just going to read you a piece of Jeremiah 11. Let's look at verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah. And among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Wow. Isn't that a frightful thing to hear? A lot of people get all caught up in this is the conspiracy that the Lord is concerned about. That his people have broken covenant. They've gone into their idolatrous ways. They're serving false gods, the gods of self. You know, so many people worry about their own self-righteousness. They worry about, you know, how, how they appear to others and pride. And there's so many things that can become a god in our life, right? If we're not careful. He said, these people, they've gone back to their idolatrous ways, the ways of their forefathers. They're not seeking my righteousness. They're not in covenant with me. That is the conspiracy. And he said, when these people cry out to me, because they've been warned by my messengers, I've sent my prophets, they have had made no room for them. He said, I will not hear their cries. And that is scary.
Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the same in the time of their trouble. For according to the member of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Mm. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry for prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she have wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from them? When thou doest evil, then thou rejoices. They rejoice in evil and wicked in their sins. Instead of repenting and hearing the prophet and hearing the message, they rejoice in their own sin. They've got it together, right? They know what they're doing. They had no uh, heart to repent. And they just kept going in their sin. And he says, okay, that was the real conspiracy that you couldn't obey and listen to my word or my prophets. But because you didn't have a heart to receive, guess what? Don't cry out to me. Because when you do, and you will do, I will not hear you. That is scary, you all. So like I said, this is a warning. Get it together. Repent from eating off of the tree of evil and and good and, and leave it don't go back to it we are the in the year of the fig tree where we're moving forward we're not looking back remember i told you that is dangerous because those who continue to look back when you look back i'm sorry that's it you're just gonna get left behind because we're moving forward we're going the distance we're building at a high accelerated pace yes we're building at such accelerated pace in this season for his people god is going to do a tremendous work he's going to do so many things um that it's going to even blow our mind right so focus on the goodness of god focus on building his kingdom focus on the word because one thing as i was reading that the Lord brought to my spirit, eating off of the tree in good of, in, of good and evil is just as bad as playing something like the Ouija board. And I thought, my God, really, Father? And he was like, yeah, because you're relying on someone else to give you your understanding about this world instead of him. That was deep to me. That just came to me all. So take heed to that. I don't know who that is for. But God sees everything, you all. God knows everything. And it is my prayer that you walk with the Holy Spirit and that you let him teach you and you let him guide you and you let him lead you. He is the most underestimated, underutilized resource that believers have. People, they just don't even know the power that they have in the Holy Spirit. He is real. And he is the one that enables you to go the distance. He is the one that gives you truth and, and, and discernment. But so many believers, they, they have no connection or relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it is so sad. It is the, he is the most underutilized resource. And he is so powerful. All right, guys. That is your word for Wednesday Wisdom. And I pray that it blesses you all. Like I said, I do have another word that I pray that I'm able to get out. It's about 2 Kings Elijah. And it talks about how God has the power to shift your reality. It's such a uh, powerful thing to understand that what you perceive, your reality based on what you it can be shifted. God can shift your reality. We're going to talk about it later. I don't want to get into it because I'll go down there and uh, down that road and, and it's not time. All right, guys, I love you. Have a blessed day. Remember, you are the head, not the tail, above only and never beneath. God loves you and so do I. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing.